Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today's lesson is on echinoderms. The objectives for today are, number one, what characteristics are used to classify echinoderms? Number two, how do echinoderms obtain their food? And number three, discuss the importance of echinoderms. What are echinoderms? Well, echinoderms are animals that belong to the phylum Echinodermata. There's about 6,000 different species of echinoderms that we've identified today. The word echinoderm actually means spiny skin, and that's because that is a common trait or characteristic that all echinoderms, echinoderms share. The spiny skin is actually a hard endoskeleton or inner skeleton that's covered by a thin, bumpy, or spiny epidermis. Epidermis is just a fancy word for skin. So it just means that it's a skin. The skin of the echinoderm is very, very scary. It's very sharp and spiny and bumpy. So there are some examples of echinoderms listed here. And uh, we'll start with the starfish, uh, the sea urchin, the sand dollar, the sea cucumber, sea, sea lilies, and brittle stars. Here are some pictures of different echinoderms, and they might look like different animals, but they do share that spiny skin. It looks very bumpy and very sharp on the outside. They're not smooth, uh, covered animals. So some common characteristics of echinoderms outside of that spiny skin are that echinoderms all have a mouth, a stomach, and intestines for the digest their digestive system. Echinoderms live in the ocean and coastal environments. And they all have radial symmetry. That's the symmetry where if you were to cut the echinoderm in equal portions, it would almost look as if you were cutting around in a circle. So it basically means that the body arrangement of the echinoderm is based upon a circle pattern. Now this is very useful because the radial symmetry allows the echinoderm to sense food and predators in all directions. Echinoderms do have nerves, but they don't have an actual head or brain structure. Uh, they do have what is called a nerve ring, and that just means that the nerves or the sense structures within are go around in a circle inside of the central body or central portion of the echinoderm. Now this nerve ring helps to the echinoderms to respond to touch and to light in their environment. Here are some other pictures of echinoderms. And as you can see, the echinoderm shares that radial symmetry. If you were to cut them radially, they would all share that same characteristic. So let's talk about how echinoderms eat. Well, they feed on living and dead organisms, and they help to recycle the nutrients in the uh, ocean and ocean floor. Now there's two structures that are unique to echinoderms that help them to get their food. The first is the water vascular system inside of the echinoderm and the tube feet, which are inside but can come out of the echinoderm. Let's talk about this water vascular system. Obviously it has something to do with water and specifically water pressure. Now the word vascular has to do with how that organism is able to transport food and nutrients internally inside of its body. So the water vascular system is a network of water-filled canals or tubes or tunnels inside of the echinoderm. And it has thousands of a structure we call tube feet connected to it. And I'll explain what tube feet are in just a second. The water vascular system 
is helps the econoderm because that system carries food, gases such as the oxygen that the animal needs to survive and the carbon dioxide that it releases as waste in and out of the body of the echinoderm. It also helps to release that waste back into the environment. And finally, that water vascular system, because it's based upon water pressure, helps that echinoderm to move throughout its environment to help it to find food. Now, the structure that actually works with the water vascular system and helps the animal to move is called the tube feet. And tube feet are hollow, thin-walled tubes inside of the organism that uh, each end in a suction cup-like structure. Now, these two feet are used for movement and for capturing food. So they're dual purpose. They use the water pressure to push the foot that is inside of, of the body out of the body. And it helps for, again, that animal to move uh, in its environment and to help capture food. But it must have water pressure in order to do that, which is why echinoderms live in marine environments. Here's an example or a picture of the tube feet of a starfish. It's a diagram that shows how they can, they can be in the body, but then when that starfish wants to move, they're actually pushed out of the body.